All right. So we are live. Uh, we're going to open the meeting of the Economic Development Committee for Tuesday, March 19th, 10 a.m. Uh, first order of business is the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So first things first, Brian, thank you for, for chairing the last meeting. I thought you did a great job. He did. You know, you become a, a pro soon and... Uh, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Careful. I know it, I see the, the quicksand. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always a, a great learning experience and as I was saying a little earlier, you know, when I started years ago, you always, you know, it's nice to have some, some people with experience kind of coach and guide and that's how you learn and yeah. that's how you teach the yeah. next generation. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, looking back, I think, you know, after we did the, uh, the voting, you know, one of the things I didn't do was like ask for any further discussion on the item. So I think that was like a, another missing piece that I'll definitely pick up on next time. Yeah. You know, but no. Was, you want to chair the next meeting? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, if, you, if you don't want to, I'll do it. I, right? I mean, you know what? I, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion that Brian chair the next meeting. Act, be the acting chairman. I'll be here and so will everyone else. Give it a try again? Yeah, I'll do Second. it. Second. All right. All right. Any, any further discussion? Seeing <laughs> none. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice job. Yeah, I don't think I have to travel that day, but I'll, I'm pretty sure I can do it. All right. If, I'll help you if you need to formulate the agenda, whatever you need. Okay. All right. So if the next order. Hello, Don. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next uh, meeting, uh, next agenda item is the, the acceptance of the minutes from your February 19th meeting. Um, has everyone had a chance to review? Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll accept a motion to accept the minutes of February 19th. So moved. All right, Mark's made the motion. PJ second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a member resignation. Uh, Russ DiGilio, um has uh, resigned because he, he had a change in work schedule and is not going to be able to attend the meeting on a regular basis. So what that's going to do is that's going to open up a full voting member position here. And um, usually, you know, we'll offer it to the alternates first um, and give them the, you know, choice of whether or not they'd like to stay alternate or become a full member again um, and if not we have to fill the vacancy and I guess uh, in looking to fill the vacancy when we had one vacancy we, we approached Nichols and that's that's how we got PJ's because Nichols was such an important part of the of the town and, and PJ's been a tremendous asset and I think that's worked out well so are there any ideas on where we want to go or who we want to approach to see if they'd like to, to sit here on the Economic Development Committee, or do we just open it up to general volunteers again? So just for thought, conversation, what, what's the board's prerogative here? I think we talked at our last meeting that we were, like you said, we were going to ask, is it Barbara? Yeah. And so I don't know if that has gone out or not. It's probably uh, the best for a step. We know that she's been really busy. So maybe that's, you know, maybe we can assume that she's not going to, but that's probably a b good first step, right? All right. So, so the first ap approach will be to uh, approach the alternates. All right. And then um, what we'll do is, I guess we can go into the next meeting. I'd rather have, make sure, you know, we fill the vacancy proper. Mm. So uh, I can do that. And then the next meeting, I'll give you an update whether or not the alternates I'm not going to put you on the spot now, Ellen. <laughs> well, Barbara. Um, and then from there, we'll figure out. So maybe just think about, and as you interact mm -hmm. with others, if one of the alternates decides that they don't want to, or if the alternate does decide that they want to, then that's going to open up an alternate spot. So regardless, if you have someone in mind, um, I had approached, uh, reached out to uh, Hinky Sass, you know, when we first formed the committee, and... Uh, Webco and um, at that point you know there was no interest maybe they, they've changed but I, I think having people that 
have a vested interest or an economic interest in the town. I mean, even like Chuck Pappas from Park and Shop, I think, would be great. But again, I don't know if their schedules, if, if they could do something like that. Or somebody from Gentex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So uh, officially, uh, the board's you know, going to ex you know, accept Russ's uh, resignation. I'll inform the board of selectmen, and I'll tell them that some nominees for appointment will be forthcoming. I'll vote representatives of the Chamber of Commerce for the Some representatives of the Chamber? Yeah, somebody who's on the Chamber who's in town. Uh, that could work as well. I mean, we have Mark, who's on uh, the Webster Dudley Business Alliance. That's the one, yeah. And the board of the Webster Dudley Oxford Chamber. And the board, so. Yeah. But, but so the Dudley resident who's on, you know, in that, in one of those two groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anybody that can, that, that, that's willing to work and to, and to bring a perspective that can help the town grow. Yeah meet the challenges so that's really you know what we're looking for mm -hmm. all right uh, next item on the agenda is the mill update um, I am scheduled to meet with the water sewer board on April 30 at 630 um, if I mean anybody more than welcome to attend with myself Where would that be um, that's going to be I, I think they meet in the back room there yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. and that's uh, you know, I, I kind of listened to our, you know, the last discussion here, and then I, I, I watched the water sewer board meet in there too, and I think some things that need to be clarified, and, and also need to remind them of some commitments that they've made to this board when we were deciding where we're going to focus. Um, and that mill district, especially Stevens, you have to total and complete go ahead on that. Um, the good news is since your last meeting here um, there's another developer out of fall river who has expressed an interest and is going to maybe be putting in a competing bid to whoever owns the mill today um, so what we uh this this developer uh, is proposing something very similar to the georgia developer which would be the uh, market to above market rents, um, you know, uh, active life senior community. I guess he's rehabilitated some of these mills down in the Fall River area. So um, his name is Alan. He's um, he's just beginning this process as well at this point. So my understanding of people that are still actively interested in it is when would propose the low income, the right housing. Uh, I think planning board at the time was pretty clear that, yeah, you can do it, but don't look for any tax breaks because of the burden that's gonna put on the schools. And so you have Wynn, you have the developer from Georgia, who I have not heard back from. I don't know how that economic feasibility study, have you heard anything, Don? I had a phone call back one time, but that was quite a while ago. Yeah, right, about it. was a, after the meeting, but it was quite a while ago. Yeah, sometimes those things take a little while. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then, so now we have a four river. Um, I, think, I think you mentioned something about April, possibly. I, I didn't understand. You mentioned something about April, possibly, if I remember. So, so it's encouraging that there's <coughs> some competition there. Um, and, you know, in the end, the way we've been presenting it to them is, you know, th this could really be, if it's done correctly, a nice centerpiece, you know, in the town. You know, it's there, it's old, you know, the sidewalk program that, you know, with that community development block grant with the AD access, I mean, to, to redo those and, I mean, and then my understanding too is that we have a hit on the other mill at the lower part of Schofield. Is that still progressing? Conversations? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. So. We could be, I mean, we were really nervous about the mills and I mean, we, we see them collapsing around us here. So th this, this, this could be a very good thing, get those rejuvenated. But again, to set the expectation, this stuff happens over a period of years mm -hmm. to, from start <coughs> to finish. It's not, it's not like rehabbing a garage. <laughs> what seems to have always been the, you know, 
in a residential um, suggestion for the mills has always been water. Um, has this new developer been made aware of the fact that water would be an issue? Uh, no. And I need to remind, see, we did meet with the Board of Sewer Board, and I was told, and I had a commitment from them, that water and sewer will not be an issue for that complex. Oh, okay. And I, I'm going to hold them to that. Mm -hmm. And that's what our meeting's going to discuss. And all, all, all I'm trying to do is to make sure, as Bill Belichick says, that people do their job. And commitments were made. We put a lot of efforts in. We have a lot of bites. So if they don't feel they have the tools to do it, then that's what we're here for. We can help them get those tools. We can help them figure out alternatives. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not an adversarial role. This is a partnership. I mean, they're a board of volunteers. Uh, they, they know their system, the capabilities of <clears> the <throat> board of volunteers. Together, we make up what, what is done. Mm -hmm. And I think if we work together and try to come up with some solutions, maybe it is. I mean, there's some prime lands uh, over in West Dudley where there is an identified aquifer. The town had a perfect chance to solve this water issue with the Corbin Road property. Uh, at the time, I had actually sent over, it was like a 150-page document on radon remediation because the, the property that was drilled as for a test well on Corbin Road actually blew out the equipment with the water supply that was there. The only issue, there were no mineral issues, no iron issues, no manganese issues, it was a radon issue. See, the state has a threshold, I think it's like 10,000. This came in at 19,000. But with the latest developments in radon remediation, they can lower those levels for a cost of like 10 cents per, per thousand gallons. Um, and that includes the, the capital cost of these radon remediation. They can reduce those levels to, you know, 90 to 95%. And so, you know, there's the Corbin Road piece. Now, if it's, you know, at one point we had six pumping stations. I think we're down to two or three now. <clears throat> so there's challenges, and we just need to show that we're on the same team. We can help them face those challenges. <clears throat> um, and it all came up when I was at a Board of Selectmen meeting. You know, I was pulled over to the side by one of the, the you know, the, the leaders of the water sewer and said, you know, we, 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 have, a, we have an issue. And that's why it all of a sudden hit our agenda. And so it's okay if we have an issue, let's just deal with it. You know, moratoriums are not a solution. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, exactly. let's deal with it. Now's the time. And we have the, the uh, Springtown meeting coming up and it's budget sign. You know, maybe we, we need to ask people to put money in escrow if we have to acquire a piece. Instead of, you know, hitting, hitting the town for, you know, quarter of a million or, you know, half a million dollars two years from now. Maybe it's time to start, you know, putting aside seventy-five thousand this year, seventy-five thousand next year, or hundred thousand, whatever that number is, and put it in escrow so that if something comes up, we can pull the trigger on it. But in the meantime, the, the tie-in to Oxford or Webster was actually mentioned by the water sewer boy. and so that's why I think we, you know it's time to have a real good discussion. So if any, anybody's welcome to attend that meeting with me. Um, the only thing I need to know is that if we have four or more, I have to post it as an economic development meeting as well. So that's the only logistical thing. Um, um, the the yeah. block grant submission has been done. So that includes the study for utilities as well as infrastructure. Yeah. If we get it, well, you know, it will be a head start. And, and that's a great example of, of, of how we can help them. I mean, I, they were, I mean, I watched their meeting. I think they were kind of unaware of that. Yeah. That, that we had spearheaded to get the grant for the study there for that aging infrastructure for them. There's a lot of money out there right now. Mm -hmm. I can't Man. say we're going to get it for sure, but we, you know, it's, you have to try. But it's like playing the lottery, right? If you don't buy a ticket, you have no shot. So That's if right. you don't apply for the grants, you right. have no shot. That's right. And, and so uh, we're, we're here. They, they, they need to look at our board, not as an adversarial, not as a board that is cr critiquing. We're just trying to identify problems. And they need to look at us the same way uh, a contractor has a tool bag with hammers and screwdrivers. We're, we're one of their hammers. We're one of their screwdrivers. Mm -hmm. Use us. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So, uh, but things have progressed since still on the mill side, and you know, we, we, we are going to bring this to completion. We are going to get those rejuvenated, you know, we're, and we'll figure, we'll assemble a team to get it done. So, any other discussion on mills? All right, next thing is the Ag Commission update. Um, we've had a, a number of different meetings and things that farmers have brought up. Uh, we had the state come in through hemp discussion, but our first official meeting is scheduled with the new Ag Commission for this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, right here at the town hall. We have a, a pretty full agenda there. The response has been really good. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to <clears throat> working. Most of these folks have never volunteered, you know, or been a part of the town. They volunteer for a lot of different things, whether it's, you know, the Strawberry Festival, the Apple Festivals, and things like that. But uh, it, it'll, it'll be nice. And I think as, as the farmers get together and they start seeing all this stuff, I think they can become truly vibrant part of the economic you know, development there in Dudley. Who's planning to go? Uh, I'm, I'm planning on going right now. Um, I do have a conflict. I saw, you, I saw Webster Dudley has his social something that night too. Yeah. Um, that's not even, there's a conflict is. Oh. I've got another one before that, so. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's open, it's, it's gonna be here again Thursday, 6.30. Um, and uh, the, the one thing that I committed to them is uh, we have a list of all APR and 61A landholders in town, and that we'll get that list to them electronically so that they can, you know, see what's, what's out there, what's protected, what's not. Um, it's, it's been an educational process for me. I still, I think I'm getting better knowing the difference between APR land and 61A land. <laughs> <laughs> it's... It's a deed restriction versus a tax taxing method. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, um, and then I guess the actual tax rate, I was having a conversation with uh, Lisa Berg because we're trying to get hemp, because we, we had that hemp discussion, we were trying to get hemp added as an agricultural commodity the way like uh, there's tobacco and crops and vegetables and stuff. and. We heard conflicting information. Mass Department of Agricultural Resources saying that they're right now because there is no legislation that it's the Board of Assessors that has the authority on it. Board of Assessors saying that they don't have the authority on it. And now you have two pieces of legislation that are absolutely conflict with each other, one filed by the House and one filed by the Senate. So this is, this is, this, this is a, a great move, the Ag Commission, because they can kind of read through it and, and at least have a voice. I guess the Senate, the Senate bill wants to add it. The House bill doesn't. And I talked to the sponsor of the House bill uh, to find out why they're trying to restrict hemp. And it was primarily because they're concerned that the big medical, publicly traded marijuana companies are going to take advantage of it and try to get the tax breaks from the towns. So with their concern there was that them buying all the small <coughs> agricultural plots and be making them big commercial farms to grow hemp and marijuana. And I was like, well. It's something in the, the Legislative Act or the legislation is, is the, is the uh, general law as it is now that, that, that's not part of chapter, it's not, in other words, it's not part of that um, Section three of Chapter Forty Eight. It's not a uh, uh, you know, what, do we, what do you call it? It's not exempt from zoning. Yeah. So that's yeah. Not uh, exempt from zoning as other agriculture is. Yeah. And and so uh, they're willing to model. I say, it's, well, if your concern is these big companies or corporations, then 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 limit it to acreage or, or come up with a criteria, but don't lock out all these small family farms out of you know what used to be a cornerstone agricultural commodity here in New England before the whole pot thing came up and they threw hemp in with pot. Yeah. So. But pot isn't, isn't exempted from zoning. Yeah, exactly. So the, uh, the Senate version is. seems to be the one, the Senate version, uh, one of the sponsors is Ryan Fatman. Uh, but it's got bipartisan support, both Democrat and, and Republican. 
Um, and that's the one that the, the farm lobby is supporting as well, which basically treats it the same way the U.S. government treats it now, as just a normal agricultural commodity. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be some sort of compromise and something to make sure that big industrial companies don't take advantage of the small towns and these small farms or whatever. But I think there will be action on that. But, but it's, it's, I've even started watching Little House on the Prairie episode so I can get better acquainted with them. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I've had invitations from some of the farmers to get my hands dirty and, and balance some hay and stuff. I don't know if I want to take them up on that. That's, too, <laughs> that's tough work. <laughs> I had a garden once. <laughs> but, uh, so, so this brings us to the, uh, the next commission, is the Recreation Commission. Uh, I was thinking about going to the Board of Selectmen. I have to go to them for the member resignation anyhow. And just asking them what their plans are, when are they going to start it. Um, do we want to take the lead on this and get in this committee established like we did with the Agricultural Commission? Um, is, I mean, it's definitely needed. Despite what people hear, there is no recreation commission today in the town of Dudley. Uh, there are people that help take care of the rail trail, uh, volunteers, no board, no representation. There are people that take care of the town, town beach, again, no boards. But there is no recreation commission. There's no one where the buck stops there, so to speak, to help promote the recreational opportunities and, and that quality of life here in Dudley. We have a lot of people that have volunteered, fill out volunteer forms that want to join a committee like this. They seem to be young families, kids, things like that. Um, it's, you know, part of me says if, if we don't do it, it's just not going to happen or it's going to happen very slowly. So how did you leave it? Did you leave it with the intention that the Board of Selectmen well, kind of recall why that happened the way it did versus the Ag Commission? Well, the act, well, both boards were supposed to be set up by the Board of Selectmen, all right? The Ag Commission, I just, I mean, because I kind of ran into some surprise resistance, I was like, this isn't going to happen unless I do it. Yeah. And so that's why I kind of own that one. Okay. Um, the Recreation Commission, I don't know if I have any of these. I mean, I think the Act Commission and helping the farmers is going to take, continue to eat up a lot of my time. I, I don't know if I have it in me to, just, just to take the bull by the horns on the rec Recreation Commission. But if we had someone on our board that is willing to do it, I mean, our board can, can give them the authority to, to go and, and, and do whatever they need to do to help get this thing started. I mean, I, ideally, it's to, to work very closely with the Board of Selectmen and you know, the, the folks that are, I mean, I think the, the first thing that would have to happen is we have to inventory, okay, anything that's recreational, <coughs> what's being done today? And, and kind of herd all the cats, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Get an inventory of, of what we have and, and, the, and the good people that are volunteering today. They're, they're the most natural people to actually be part of this commission, I would think. And then from there, I guess I had the impression that you set these commissions up and they kind of take on and do what the charter kind of designs them to do, right? Yeah, once they're established, you exactly. You, know, you exactly. get the members and you, 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 know, we, you know, however that charter is created, you know, either we provide some input or the, that group creates their own charter. Well, it's got to be with the Board of Selectmen, I guess, that would help define that strictly, right? Well, yep. You wind them up and you, you kind of let them kind of go on their way, right? Well, well, the town meeting warrant clearly defined what, what the responsibilities and, and their charter is, all right? The Board of Selectmen are going to be responsible for actually posting the openings, you know, that there's vacancies there, establishing the commission itself. And then once they're established and organized, <clears throat> then, it, then they run with it. It's yeah. to use their so, creative. So really the issue of the uh the recreation is the fact that there's just somebody that hasn't done it because the board of selectmen is not going to physically do a lot of this legwork to get it to where it needs to be right there's no actual resistance from the board of selectmen to create this commission or is it 
Or you don't know. We ran into opposition at, when we were trying to get it passed at the town meeting, we, we did run into opposition. Okay. But you did it on the Ag Commission. Yeah, I and mean, we ran into opposition on the Ag Commission too. Okay. But we just plowed through it. And I think that's what we need to do on this one. We need to just plow through it. Okay. So what's the opposition? Um, that it's not needed. That the Board of Selectmen are doing a good job. They're doing a good job with the town beach. There are volunteers available. That it's going to turn into a board that's going to become a money sucker out of the budget. Okay. That's, that's the heart and soul of, mm -hmm. of what the opposition was around. And that's not paying the people. That's providing the resources that are needed to maintain the beach or any recreational area. Exactly. Now, the charter did give the Recreation Commission the ability to raise funds. That's what I was going to All right. Ask. You know, separate bank account, separate accounting, gave them the ability to roll over funds from year to year. So a good example would be the rail trail. See, see right now the rail trail, um, and that was used as one of the, one of the examples. Uh, the DPW, if the rail trail needs work, um, the rail trail uses the DPW, and then the DPW hits the rail trail budget for the cost of their labor or whatever was involved in that work. With the Recreation Commission, they could decide that it's more efficient to go out to bid for the whole thing. You know, the town beach, the maintenance, or whatever, or continue to use the DPW. So the, there was a question about, you know, authority. Oh, well, so Board of Selectmen, I mean, don't they set the budget? They just allow and, and, uh, and allocate whatever they feel is available for the budget line, right? And then they have to work within those, what they've got, and raise money if they want to do more, right? I mean, that's. But a town meeting. You can amend the budgets, and that was one of the concerns. Is that, you know, um, you have by, this commission that's by popular vote, yeah. and, right? I mean, it has to go through any other budgetary uh, process, which is fine, right? Yeah. I mean that. I mean, uh, so I don't know. I, I mean, they hold the purse strings pretty tight, and it does go through a democratic approval process, but I mean. I mean, it should have a shot at going after the funds, right? Yeah. Yeah, you've been to town meeting, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've been. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have trouble. We have trouble approving an ambulance. So, <clears throat> you know, if you're taking funds from somewhere, is it away from the school? Is it away from the police? Is it away from the fire? Is it away from whatever? To, you know, build a you know, better improve the park on Pine Street or to, you know, make a change to something else. I think it'd be a hard sell, but, you know, you know I don't want to be a downer on it, but just trying to be realistic, you know. They say tell me he's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everybody's there a fair game to fight for what they want, sure. right? That's what it's yeah. about. Yeah. So, I mean. And I can't imagine the budget would pie. be too I mean, to, to, to eliminate the, the overall potential upside of what this committee can do for something that you don't even know the implications from a financial standpoint just seems to be very short-sighted at this point. Right? I'll, I'll give you a great example of, of how the Recreation Commission, if it was already established, could, could have helped. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was some students at Nichols approached the Board of Selectmen about doing something for bike trails here in Dudley. Uh, that people that like to mountain bike or ride their bikes, there's nothing available. That was that would be perfect for the, if there was a recreation commission to take an inventory, right? Look at the conservation lands that are there, the open access, right, the public space. Say, you know, can we make something like this happen? But what'll happen now, right, is because the recreation commission's not there, it'll go before the board of selectmen, and the board of selectmen have got a lot of things on yeah, their plate, and that's right. And, and again, it's an, it's not a slam to the board of selectmen. It's, it's tough work managing a town, it's finances, the operations, logistics, right? Highway, you know, you got, you got all these other things. Where does a bike trail fit in that? Mm -hmm. It's probably down there. But if you had a recreation commission, they could actually look and see, okay, can we do this? Can we modify this? Can we do this? 
you know, and can, can you get a grant to do it? That's it, the grant. I think the uh, rec rec Recreation Commission, it would be a good source of information. You know, it would be an easy place for people to go to see what's happening in the town and or bring their ideas. I mean, I know Joanne, she said that they used to have swimming lessons at the town beach. That would be great. I mean, there's so many th good things and grants. You know, you could just phone grants over to the commission and they can check them out. Well, the Recreation and Commission programs are supported by funds to fees. I mean, uh, doesn't necessarily, the programs themselves don't necessarily come off the tax rate. They can be funded by, yeah, by fees. I, I, uh, I, you know, when we, 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 we talked through this five-year development uh, plan, and one of the cornerstones of the plan was improving the quality of life yes. in town. Mm -hmm. And how much more bang for the buck can you get by winding up some young families with a, with a charter to improve the quality of life in town? I don't know. I, I think it's a great empowering thing. And I think you're going to get a heck of a lot more benefit than some financial whack on the budget. You know. so so what about this approach? I mean, since I have to go before the board for, uh, you know, Russ's resignation and, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I can ask them what their plans are. And then at our next meeting, you know, say, guys, it looks like we're going to have to take the bull by the horns or, or with the selectmen that we've developed a plan and it looks good or whatever. Um, and then we'll bring it up on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because, you know, okay. once we make a decision that we're going to forge ahead, you know, how long is it going to take before this thing? It, it's going to take another year before this committee is in the same spot that the Ag Commission is right now. Yeah. Right? Realistically. I mean, you're talking a year of, and that's just making the decision to go. Yeah. And, you know, so it's, I don't think we got to take our eye off of that, the goal that, you know, we, we believe that that's something necessary, I think, as a committee. And we just got to keep pushing on it somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking if we could write up an appeal, um, like about the the I'm not used to saying this, the Recreation Commission, um, and post it on Facebook, like what we want to see happen. Would anybody be interested? There's a lot of young parents that are on on the Facebook groups, and I'd be willing to post it. Okay. And come up with something that's well written. Mm -hmm. You know, it describes it and see what kind of interest we get. <clears throat> the other thing um, that I think would be a good next step after you have the conversation, John, is for, is for us to, you know, before we decide to take it on, is do some due diligence and, you know, like you said, take an inventory. But, you know, I, let's identify what things would likely come up, you know, and it can be a 30,000 foot view of what those are and then see what sort of costs would be associated with making those happen. And if it's absorbent, then maybe, you know, I mean, is this really the best use of our time and the town's resources? You know, I think we probably need to have that information before we just jump into this. Because, <clears throat> again, if you get some young families, like Alan's talking about, which is a great idea, um, everybody wants, you know all kinds of different things but there are costs associated with all of those and not everybody who especially those who are not involved with the town who don't attend town meeting which there's a lot of them don't really understand how budgets work in a town you know so it's oh great yeah i'll join this thing and you know you'll they'll get extinguished right away i'll join you know i'll join we're going to meet. We're going to do all these things. Yep, we want a rail trail here. We want a bike trail there. We want the Pine Street Park taken care of. We want to make sure that this is done, that's done. We want to have swimming lessons down at the beach, and they've got this big, huge thing, and they, it just gets squashed because, you know, they don't re Oh, well, you asked us to identify these. Yeah, but the cost of all of these is an association. <coughs> and if it ends up being, you know, out of control, then I, I think that you're just setting them up for failure. So I think we really need to identify the structure of it, the, give them some guidelines. So, you know, winding them up is a good thing, but I think we need to give them guidelines and, and certainly educate them on the budget process. There's not an endless supply of funds, yeah. you know. And I think everybody gets that when you say it like that, but if you really, 
if you have not been to town meeting during the budgeting process, it's, I mean, it's very simplistic, but it, it's, <laughs> there's not a ton of extra cash. And if something's being allocated for something else, it's gotta be taken from somewhere, you know, so. I think that'd be important to really identify and set the ground rules first. And at least maybe for us to understand and digest first. And if we're like, okay, yeah, well, you know, in the next, we can't look at it like you said for, you know, what's gonna happen in the next six months. We gotta say what's gonna happen in the next six years. And next year we can do the swimming lessons, the year after that, you know, whatever. And then lay it out and say, all right, <clears throat> here's the agenda. This is what we wanna do. This is the, 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 the steering document. Now we need a team to drive it, right? So, because <clears throat> if you just let them come up with all kinds of things, I guarantee you, you're gonna have a list of some really super awesome ideas, but we, we won't have any money to do, you know, the town won't have any money to do maybe even one of those or two of those. I, I think that's very legitimate. And, and I think you hit the nail right on the head, right? You're gonna get all these young folks that have never experienced town before were very excited about doing this and realizing the money's not there. <clears throat> and that one of the, the reasons why the, for, the formation of this is to help get the money there. Right. You know, to get the grants, to get the private donations. You know, um, when we were doing the five-year plan, some, some of the old commission uh, members had actually come up with a resident permit system which I actually thought was a pretty good idea, you know, that would identify, okay, local, right, you pay 20, 25 bucks for your little permit and it gives you access to all the conservation lands, you know, the, the open trails, you do a partnership with like the Dudley Conservation Land Trust and, you know, just a sense of community, like a, like a donation type thing and then that would go into them. So there's no magic bullet, right? It's a lot of nickels and dimes and hard work and so I think to set that expectation, because otherwise we are going to burn them out and mm -hmm. that enthusiasm is going to just die, I think, you know. All right, so, so um, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll, uh, when I, I'm, uh, Michelle's fantastic as far as getting me on the agenda for the board. It's like when, when I'm on the agenda, I'll let you guys know. Mm -hmm. And if, if you guys want to attend, you know, so really it's, it's to find out, you know, what's the next step with that. and then. I also wanted to ask the, bo the board when they were going to take up our five-year plan because we submitted that back in July and excluding the Agricultural Commission one, that's the only part of the plan that's been addressed. And they were going to hold public hearings and public input sessions. It would be nice if they issued like a one-page executive summary of their thoughts on the plan yeah. to, this, to this board, to this yeah. committee. That would be... A nice, a nice professional way to approach it and move it to the next step. Right? Give, us, give us your thoughts on, on, a, on a summary. Can I request that? Uh, yeah. Did, the, I, I mean, are you making a motion that we request from the Board of Selectmen a, a one-page summary yes. of, of what their thoughts are on the entire plan, mm -hmm. pros and cons? Yeah, All right, Ellen has made the motion. Is there a second? second? Yeah, a second. All right, Brian is second. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we will uh, send a letter. Uh, I'll deliver it, uh, you know, before I'm on the agenda there. I'll, I'll, I'll send it over to everybody for review, input, comments, <clears throat> and uh, just an executive summary of their thoughts because yeah, that consumed like, two years of our lives <laughs> 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 all right um, next item on the agenda town video update uh, Joanne and Mark any, any oh okay PJ no go <clears throat> pardon me so I was able finally to meet with the team at Nichols College who we have the green screen room and we have a lot of um, ability. Um, I met with Professor Rob Russo who's a young professor on campus who's very uh, interested 
actually enroping this production into one of his classes that he teaches semesterly. And so one of the things I was going to, um, I emailed Joanne, I was hoping um, to meet with her just to kind of outline what we need to do. But um, so what we would see happening is that in the next couple of months, over the summer, over the late spring, over the summer, if between Mark, between Joanne, if we can kind of have an outline of who you want to meet with, you know, who are the offices we're trying to highlight here at the, at the town hall, but also the different developers, the different properties, over the summer, uh, Professor Russo can be doing the shooting of, like, he's got a drone, he's got the equipment, he can be getting all the footage we need, including sit-down interviews at the green screen room, which is just hard to do when we're in session because the space is being utilized. And then over the course of each semester, the class would actually be work on video editing and create the different segments that you might want to produce. And so basically every six months for the foreseeable future, we could be producing two or three segments professionally done, really nice, um, at no cost to the EDC in the town of Dudley. We can post it on Facebook and the website and everything else. It's just a little bit more lead-in time in terms of, you know, he, I don't have the ideas. You all have the good ideas on who we should be meeting with and what properties should be um, highlighting. And then over the course of spring and summer, when he's got a lot more downtime, he can go out actually and be taking this footage and working with whoever in the green screen room to do an interview type of setup. Um, and then he hands it over to his class on a semesterly basis, and they work on editing you know, the different segments. Um, so it's a little bit more lead time to get it done, but I think um, it kind of it allows us um, to help the class. It gives them a real world project to be working on, which is kind of exciting for these students to put their name on it. Um, a little bit more of a professional production at zero cost to us. So that's the general outline. I think if we can work on, um, you know, I don't know, Mark, if, if Joanne's more taking the lead or if it's going to be you or whatnot, but if we can start working on a list and start organizing, you know, who we want to meet and when, <coughs> we can line up the summer in terms of getting the footage we need to turn over to the classes and then you know, he teaches this class every semester. So it's kind of, it could be an ongoing production for a couple years out. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had given that update to uh, Joanne or not, or if you guys had done that together. I emailed her okay. and, and just asked <coughs> if we could have a meeting so yeah. I could outline it. Um, so I'll do, if it's all right, I'll type it up in an email and send it to the both of you. Yeah, that'll be great. And then we'll just kind of see. Um, okay. I hadn't gotten a response yet, but uh, I've been having email issues, so it could be on my end. Okay. Um, but that's what I thought we would and, and that's the proposal, at least, on how Nichols can help in that production. Yeah, that's good. I know that Joanne, uh, at the end of our last meeting, uh, we grabbed Todd and um, suggested that, you know, maybe the first segment be about, you know, the financial side of it or the finance, you know, um, how you really need to, you know, before you decide to uh, get involved in an economic development project or whatever, you know, the financing side of it is important. And yeah. So she had talked about that. you and that. Joanne can kind of outline what you would think is either a progression of an idea and so yeah. the segments build on each other or, you know, it's a little of both. It's building on some info that can be helpful that can then be posted to the website in a sequential manner that makes sense, mm -hmm. but also highlighting some, because we had talked about highlighting some properties and things like that. I think if you the two of you can work on an outline for Rob um, and, and then contacts. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't, nobody has to be overburdened in doing all of this in one month. We can right. take the summer and the late spring. We get out May 11th, so really after that time, um, that gives us a lot of time. Okay. And then, that you know, in about November, December, we'd have the actual videos ready. And again, in about late March, April, so we could be on like a six-month rotation of new content. Uh, it's kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. so hopefully that's what we're looking for. I no, I, I think it's fantastic. Great. Uh, well, I'll email the so, two of you. And uh, please express our sincerest appreciation mm -hmm. to Nichols for the donation of the time, the, the resources, and uh, the expertise to get this thing. Well, Rob, he's pretty talented. He, he's, uh, he's learned in the last couple of years how to really use the drone uh, and take yeah. some beautiful footage. And, you know, if you're going to take beautiful footage of Dudley, let's wait until the summertime when it's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. uh, <No>. and, 
<coughs> not March. <laughs> and, and just a reminder, Mark. I mean, I think I believe the board, you know, gave you and Joanne total authority on this project. Mm -hmm. I mean, just do what you got to do. You know, at the end, you guys will own it. Yeah. And so you have, you know, whatever you think is going to, you know, help the town and just make those decisions and. Just give us the updates. Okay. We look forward to seeing the, yeah. the finished product. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think there's too many cook, you know, sh chefs in the kitchen. Nothing gets yeah. <laughs> get done. So it's yeah, yours. Yeah, if absolutely. you need us for anything, let us know. Okay. Excellent. I think it's a great idea still. You know, mm -hmm. people are vi visual. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. Well, we can get so. some really. I think again. I think you can put together. I know he can put together some really. Great highlights to Dudley itself. Just I'm thinking it can help with grant applications down the road and so many different things. Sure. Excellent. Thanks. Any further discussion on the town video update? All right. Don, town planner update. I think I've been through it. <laughs> yes, I mean, haven't really met much with uh, CMRPC. I'm meeting with them. I think there's a luncheon that they're sponsoring tomorrow. I'll probably get to speak with some of the, uh, you know, Carrie and uh, Rob. So. Okay. Do you see any other, uh, so the complete streets, that's going to be all de dependent on us getting that old ADA project, ADA compliance? Somewhat, yeah. All right. It all fold in. All right, yeah. I know it's kind of yeah. all tied into each other. Yeah. Is there anything, any actions <clears throat> from the board that you need or anything right now that we're not provided? Not really at this point, no. Okay. I mean, next month we'll see what, what transpires. All right. You know, uh, the one thing that struck me that I don't know if we ever really followed up on, when we did that village site walk and we were at Park and Shop Plaza. This is all part of what we're doing right now in conjunction with the, uh, the, e, the EEO. Well, what the, what the acronym is, Executive Office of Energy and uh, something, whatever it is. It's the, 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 the uh, program we're doing with uh, Webster. It's all going to tie in. But, but in particular with Park and Shop Plaza, there was talk about how do you get that, because we really don't have much retail space here in town. Right. And I forget who it was, but somebody had come up with the possible idea of talking to Park and Shop about maybe expansion with the right or like a, you know, right now it's just the back wall, but they maybe doing something on, on, the, on the right end left. And, and I, the more I go by that plaza and I see that, I'm like, that, that was really a good yeah. idea. But it's old parking. There's plenty of park, more than enough parking in there. Right. Yeah. So I just wondered if anything ever happened to that or? It could be part of it too. There's Part of the study is to tie that into the uh, West Main Street properties in, in Nichols. You know, maybe it's maybe it's even uh, just finding the owners of the, of the plaza and having a conversation with them, saying, "What are your intentions with the property? Mm -hmm. To expand or, or?" I think we bring them into the process. There we go. Yeah. All right. Not to talk badly, but I've heard some some issues with uh, the existing building um, and the, the refusal of repairs and I don't know if it's triple net services over there or, or uh, leases or not but um, I think that was one of the main reasons why big lots left so not sure how cooperative that would be but again that's just my opinion I don't want to send any <laughs> bad bad information out that's not accurate but that's kind of the information that I heard on the real estate side of it no. All right. We'll keep pondering real fast. Yeah. It's always, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great. I know at 1.88 s was talking about, I know it's not there now, but um, putting a, a freestanding building like the Webster First Federal is in that same plaza, which, again, makes sense. There's plenty of parking. Yeah. But that, again, obviously all, all costs money, so. Maybe the complete streets program we worked into that too. Eventually, if we get if we go for that program at some point in time, that could work into there too. I, I imagine something we 
that might be another opportunity. I mean, if, if some of that space in the parking lot is available for freestanding construction and somebody else could come in and do it, yeah. then it has to be, the public has to be made aware, right? Yeah. You're not going to get somebody to show up. Yeah, not many, right? I mean, the, so our role would be to hopefully promote that, right, from a development standpoint. Yeah. yeah, it's all well and good, but it's on someone else's property, yeah. you know, so 88, yeah. their, re their refusal to do it probably ended up being, you know, if they can't own that land, yeah. then they're building an infrastructure that they wouldn't ultimately own. Right. And that not necessarily is a good, it's not usually a good investment, but, you know, there's a lot of moving pieces to that, so. <clears throat> and we'll have to see too also you know with the infrastructure is it amenable to expansion you know water sewer fire suppression systems you know that all requires water flow right. so maybe I'll bring that up with water and sewer too and just say just out of curiosity you know, where do, what are the challenges there I know at one point like Marty's there was an issue with drainage and stuff there and you know the way all these big pipes came into a little pipe at one point so I don't know, just, you know, the wheels are turning. <laughs> yep. um, so next thing on the agenda, new business, open discussion. Anybody have anything that they'd like to discuss that not discussed or? So like you had asked, John, I can give you an update um, on uh, Webster Dudley Business Alliance. Um, I know, Don, you and I talked at the end of our last meeting and suggested that you get more involved in that and you may yeah. have, I don't know. But well, I thought you didn't have them reach out to me, but yeah, you know, okay. I, I, I can, well, I, I, I did share. Is there anything to check with them? Check in with them. Sure. <clears throat> That's what you like to do. I did share with them that um, you know they give a lot of updates on what Webster's doing, but not Dudley. And I said I'm on the Economic Development Committee, and you know our town planner Don Johnson comes to that, and I, you know, asked him to become more active in the uh, WDBA and he said that he would and Deb said that she would uh, reach out as well, Deb Haran, who's the president, I know. and uh, find out when, you know, our meetings are and, you know, attend some of those. I know she was planning on attending um, a meeting for Webster. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she attends the, the economic development and I don't think she necessarily feels as though she needs to come here because typically what I'll do is I'll share our notes or any pertinent information, you know, with her before our board meetings and so we get an update that way. But again, I do think that it would be good for you guys to at least have a conversation, you know, maybe on a monthly basis or a, you know, a couple times a month just to yeah. kind of sure. stay you know, apprised of what's going on. Sure. Um, and on a, uh, an event standpoint, so basically w the question came up, you know, how is WDBA, Webster Dudley Business Alliance, different from the Webster Dudley Oxford Chamber of Commerce? And it's a good question, you know, and so, uh, you know, we think that, you know, we all felt that the Webster Dudley Oxford Chamber is more, you know, governmental and, you know, uh, can assist with uh, taxes and, um, you know, town issues. Certainly relate and, and support a lot of the members and a lot of the members are retailers and businesses in those communities. Whereas the Webster Dudley Business Alliance is more about, you know, a, a much lower level more economic development driven, you know, how do we, um, you know, still, yeah, here's some grant opportunities for some new signage in Webster. You know, there's some great grant opportunities now where they can get up to, I think, $2,500 for signage if it, they just kind of identify what their need is and fill out the application and, and get it in. How many have done that? I don't know. but. It's that sort of, you know, grassroots growing and help growing some of these smaller businesses. So um, as an example, um, on the 21st, which is in two days, um, the Rose Room Cafe, which is a new um, it's a tonic bar. I have not been there yet. I've been trying to get there. I understand it's very healthy. 
They use a lot of um, local uh, local providers, um, cheese food. and yeah. um, eggs and food. So ties right into our you know <clears throat> ag committee group and what and what they're all about. Um, but anyway, they're not currently a member of the Webster Dudley Business Alliance, and we're still having an event there to kind of you know really show them that these are the things that we can do. We can help you drive your business and you know we want a lot of people to see your business and understand what it is you do so that's um, uh, Thursday the 21st at 630 goes till 8 o'clock you don't have to be a member to go um, you can sign up online it's the wdba.org um, and then the next event is in May um, it's a paint night out and that's at um, Carol Savard Studio, uh, that's on Thompson Road, 148 Thompson Road, and that is um, a $10 admission. But it's a um, you know an opportunity to go in and have some fun and you know um, do some networking and meet some different people. But yeah, so those are just a few of the things. Uh, prior to that, they were at Lemongrass, but you note a you know kind of a theme here is it's all the Webster businesses, you know, and so I'm hoping to try to change that a little bit but i definitely need your help you know with that too don so you know getting dudley more involved in wdba i think will definitely help with yeah, that yeah you know, working that too All right. excellent so we'll, we'll make that a regular part of the agenda it's just a, a webster dudley business alliance update mm -hmm. and we'll keep track of the activities and the programs that they're doing there to try to help any anything else? All right, seeing nothing else. The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, Mark's made the motion. <laughs> Jay second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Don, for coming in. All right. <clears throat>